All right, so I've got recording started. And yeah, I didn't realize Trisha couldn't be here. That's too bad. Um, but yeah, we'll record and uh, it would be awesome. I will try, but with HackMD, of course, uh, it's multiply editable. So uh, if that's a word, um, so be great if anyone else, um, Steve already has it set up with the topics in the notes section. So feel free to help me out. Um, so we can have some basic notes for people that watch or listen in later. Um, and all right, let's, let's get started. Steve, you want to kick it off? Yeah, sure. So um, the basic premise that we wanted to do today, and let me actually bring up, uh, we'll share some slides here. Um, the basic premise we want to do is uh, we've been talking about the OCI artifact uh, registry stuff for a while now. And uh, it turns out that a number of people that actually run registries are or have you know, more influence it in various ways from security, for instance, with Justin, that um, you're on different time zones. So the two o'clock in the afternoon Western time didn't work for folks. So I wanted to, we wanted to try to get this so that people in China and Europe could join um, and just make sure we have everybody involved that can be. Uh, so that's not just trying to watch a video afterwards. But I wanted to try to give a good quick overview of where we're at and quick is always relative to the questions and so forth, but that's kind of the point. Um, the goal of the meeting is to make sure we're not missing anything and make sure we're actually going to be able to reach the goal that we want. Whereas uh, registry operators that are or customers that are trying to store additional artifact types don't have to stand up yet another storage solution. Um, they're already running NPM and maybe NuGet and you know various other things. And then, of course, if anybody's doing fairly modern technology, has got a, a registry somewhere. The idea is, can we leverage these registries for additional artifact types, whether it be Helm, Singularity, OPA, Marky Mark, um, and various ones. Uh, so we've got the majority of the pieces there. Uh, there's certainly more work, but the idea is, can we put more work into a single you know, base solution for people to build on rather than every one of these varied solutions having missing pieces. So I'll do a quick uh, set of slides uh, over this. And can you guys actually see the slides or do you see like this black hole of the pictures of us? I, I see, see, your, see the slides. Yep, it's good. Okay, good. Um, we wouldn't so, have you, like, you know, continue like that. You're fine. <laughs> okay. I just wasn't sure because I got the picture of you guys off on the side here and then this bar that I don't know how to hide here. Let me try to move that. So we'll just get started. So um, we, like a couple of other folks, went down a path that we wanted to start adding other artifact types to the registry. Um, so we started with Helm uh, back in, what was it, last September or so. And the more we got into it, the more we, you know, we were thinking about it, we kind of liked, we thought we liked the experience that we had this nice Helm API integrated, but we were never really thrilled about it because it, it required you to have multiple APIs, the Helm API and our AZ uh, API. At the same to time, um, other the CLIs were coming out. I'm trying to move this thing in. There we go. Um, we started seeing a sprawl of others. And at this point, are we just going to keep on adding uh, new CLIs to our CLI? And it just kept on growing. Uh, and honestly, the amount of work we had to do for each one was not a realistic amount of work that we can keep up with all of them. Um, so we quickly kind of did invert and said, what can we actually make this just part of the Helm CLI uh, so that there's a native experience just like we have with Docker, right? You Docker push pull login across any uh, cloud or vendor that implements distribution. And so that's what we really wanted to try to get to. But of course we could only do that and you know, Helm being this open source project if the various op, um, uh, clouds could support it. Otherwise, it's just not interesting. We're not going to ask a particular project to support a particular cloud. So the more we went into this, the more we unpeeled and found more details around how registry works that actually could support this model. And thus, the Helm project has, Helm 3 has moved down this path uh, where they can actually do that. And we were able to work with Singularity, who's also doing uh, Singularity push and pull uh, experiences. Um, so if you think about these, just to kind of take a step back, um, and most of you, you know, uh, will, you know, 
kind of a long loop, you know, think about this and, uh, as we do it. You know, if you're creating one of these storage things, any of them, right, there's how do you authenticate against it? You know, there's no general push pull um, without some kind of authentication. Uh, how do you prevent hacks? There's a lot of uh, in, you know, security work that has to go into it. Um, and then from costs, it's not just the cost, it's varied cost. Does a customer have to learn and manage yet another storage thing? Uh, and as cloud operators, do we have to run yet another storage thing? Uh, the pivotal one for me was when uh, I was asked to run Terraform in Azure, uh, the Terraform registry, and we're like, okay, well, um, that's a number of engineers that we have to do that. Is that really, is it big enough to justify? And I'm not trying to challenge Terraform, but you have to think about these for each one. So, and then we start to have all these other capabilities that we're constantly adding to registries. Um, are you gonna chase each one of these things for the storage solutions? So, you know, if you think about what it takes to run one of these, there's probably at least 10 engineers uh, that are full-time that are doing nothing more than supply, support compliance, rollouts, feature asks, um, and patching and mediation of various things. And of course, there's a support team that has to support that product or service whether it's something it's an OSS project or you know, a, a cloud service like ACR, ECR, GCR, Quay, you know, Docker Hub, so forth. So the, um, if you do create yet another storage solution, now you have to come back and convince us all to run your storage solution because it does cost us engineering time and opportunity to go do that. Um, and of course, you know, you have to figure out somewhere the money's coming for it. Somebody's bringing a bag of cash, either it's customers or it's, you know, we're deciding we want to do it as a loss leader just to make sure that we can uh, support this ecosystem. And you've got Quay and, you know, Harbor and all these others that run it as well. So if we think about what OCI registries supports, right, the distribution project, there's a REST metadata, REST API for metadata to go find out what is this thing. I could ask it, hey, do you have something of this content addressable type? Uh, there's a way to return not just a single thing, but a way to split it up in layers. Uh, the Docker images have an ordinal layering system. Uh, it allows me to keep some stuff on the client. So when I ask for the next thing, if I already have part of it, I don't have to download it. Uh, it can also be split up so I can do concurrent downloads and so forth. Uh, and of course it has the blob storage and it's got a really good abstraction because, you know, uh, uh, ECR can use their S3 buckets, you know, Azure can use our storage, and each cloud provider can implement their uh, particular storage provider, including an on-prem, I could just mount files. So I need to go figure out how do I do that for yet another storage solution as well. And then of course, we're all adding additional capabilities um, to these. We have integrated auth with our various auth systems that our customers are trying to integrate with and role-based access control compliance. Of course, we need documentation. And then there's all kinds of capabilities that we innovate uniquely on ours and then some kind of roll back into the community. So it's just a matter of how are we gonna, is each one of these storage solutions gonna chase yet another one? But ultimately, you know, we're trying to get whatever the CLI, the, you know, the, the artifact author is trying to create we want them to have a native experience. I don't want them to have to have, you know, an OCI dot push pull and there's some generic thing. It should be just like there's Docker push pull and there is, you know, singularity push pull and Helm and so forth. We want anybody to be able to create an experience that's native to them so that they can talk, talk to some backend storage thing. They want to focus on their thing. They're not really looking to focus on yet another storage solution. So instead of writing code to something that they have to write to, we're basically just saying, just write the code to the artifact registry. We have the basic APIs you need. There's more we need, which is the second part of this conversation. So then I can go thing login, push, pull with a content addressable name and using the tagging scheme is a great way to do versioning in an open way. Um, and I can just push something in and such, you know, grab this directory, grab these files, however, that particular uh, CLI wants to work. So I'll pause there because uh, everybody here pretty much knows how images are stored in a registry and I can certainly go into some of the details, but uh, this is part of where I wanted to open for a discussion is, you know, how do people think about this? There's some new people uh, here. Um, I, I know, you know, uh, it's funny because it's one, uh, John Gossman, somebody we work with, has this saying, of his, 
if there's a good idea, then there was, I can see if there's any good idea that at least five people have built a solution and you know about three and the numbers range depending on how big it is. Um, we'd already kind of gotten pretty far into this. And then, you know, I met Jimmy and found out what Quay had been doing uh, with their work. So uh, it was just an example of, you know, here's yet another way that people have been trying to accomplish this. What do we need to do to break through? And I think the way we need to break through is not have it unique to one cloud. Um, the storage kind of solutions are pretty much commoditized. Can we agree on what this commodity is rounding around distribution and then build the missing pieces so then we can go focus on the things that we're really trying to uniquely focus on in our various clouds and products. So with that, I'll pause. The where do you think uh, my question would be where do you think the missing pieces are do you think they're mostly client side or do you think uh, there's stuff to do registry side server side to support different models great question so um, the pieces that we is always little pieces but the big pieces that we're missing are a way to query a registry consistently on what does it have right we the catalog API you know we've talked about it, it didn't as, as amazing as the registry worked for its layered uh, uh, for its abstraction of how things get persisted for different storage and authentication can be plugged in and various other components, um, the catalog API unfortunately didn't work out that well. Um, so we need a way for uh, a common search mechanism so that, that various CLIs can ask a registry, hey, do you have something that looks like this? Uh, there's another part of it around eventing uh, because one of the major reasons people use search APIs uh, you know in a means that should be consistent across all registries is for the vulnerability scanners right every vulnerability scanner asks the registry what's in it so they could scan it and pretty much every cloud provider has a slightly different version that every uh, uh, scanner has to implement that cloud specific version and if we're big enough they'll do the work if we're not they won't um, and we're at a loss. The idea is if we can get these search APIs, not only can we get interesting browsable UIs on top of it, you know, a la Docker Hub for a company's private registries, but uh, scanners can not only scan images consistently across all clouds, but they can now start to look at these other artifact types and scan home charts, scan skin singularity, scan marky mark if they decide to. Uh, because they will be able to find out what these things are in a registry. Uh, they'll know that they are one or the other because of the media types that we're promoting as a way to determine uh, what different artifacts are in a registry. And now a company that wants to know what are all the things that they're storing for production or otherwise, there is an ecosystem there where vulnerability scanners can plug into and know what these types are and say, yeah, everything in this registry actually is secured. And if it's not, they block it. So search is one with an eventing model. So the eventing model is as I push something to a registry, the scanner should find out right away uh, so that they don't have to periodically scan it to death. Um, the other one is a signing solution. And these are two topics that we'll talk about after, you know, and not, you know, we can certainly dive into them. But the, you know, how do we have a common signing of artifacts that get pushed into a registry that um, we know that they are what they are. Uh, we know that when they're moved from one registry to another, so you know, Microsoft has software, we're a software company as well. We ship content on MCR, we publish it on Docker Hub, but the best practice, no matter what cloud you're in, is to always pull that image or that artifact close to your deployment. Right? You wanna have your auth for your company, so if you, somebody leaves that company, you can you know, block them because they're not part of your company anymore. You want to have a close for network reliability and you know, performance. Um, so if as a Microsoft company with MCR, we know and we want people to move our images into uh, ECR and GCR and Quay and on-prem. Um, but we want that signature that says this is the Microsoft product that we shipped to still be the signature that's on it. Uh, and we'd like to do it for Helm charts and Singularity and OPA and, you know, with Marky Mark being a fun little small project once it supports signing. It should be drop dead easy for them to do. Um, and then the last one, which I didn't put on there, and then I, I won't go too much into this, uh, is metadata. We all have various metadata we store in our registries. There is no consistency across any of us. Um, there's not even a proposal, I think, to do that. 
Uh, so we'd like to be able to say that all these different artifacts that want to say, hey, this was based on this Git hash, um, or you know, here's some you know information like the Docker Hub readme description associated with the artifact. We want to be able to have that as a consistent API across. Yeah, the I mean, we don't even have any standardized way of saying what kind of thing an image is if it's not a a Docker image and what it's for and what you're supposed to do with it. I mean, so I think that's kind of um, it seems kind of really basic thing as like, you know, this is a CNAB and you're supposed to be using, you know, CNAB with it, not Docker. Right. And that part is the place that we did make the progress. Um, so we do have that as part of this uh, artifacts project that we've uh, got adopted in OCI is we do have a way to define what the types are so that we do know that it is a Helm chart versus a uh, image. There is a, a, a gap there that we need is the next round that CNAB is actually based on index versus a manifest because they have a collection of manifests where Helm is a single manifest. So I don't wanna, you know, Justin's right that we're, we're missing a piece of it, um, but we do at least have it at the manifest level. Anyway. So that's the momentum that we want to build upon, is we now can at least start to identify types. We want to fill the gap in index. Um, we want to make sure that the various registry operators that are running these registries, you know, are, can get their voices heard and, and participate uh, and make sure that we're not missing something. Um, so that's the, the main part there. So the answer is really actually there's nothing wrong with the kind of the push pull model It's more around the kind of ancillaries that need to be consistent to make it work for other types of artifact. Correct. Correct. If you look at the common needs and I'm actually at this uh, software bill of materials meeting this week, um, where we're, we're trying to find a standard on that. And then we have PacCon coming up where you know, you have various package managers. You know, what are the, the common things that these things need? And to be very clear, I'm not promoting, suggesting that the existing package managers should change, right? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And quite frankly, they're more robust than what we have right now. Uh, but I would like to understand what it is that uh, customers or artifact authors need. And the most obvious is search, metadata, um, signing, that to take this you know, huge, very successful project and make it leverageable uh, across other types. And part of that is we need some help. So in addition to getting people to you know, validate or invalidate some of the things we're doing, we actually do need some help in some of these things. Um, the same people that are you know, been working on just the, the core artifact piece, uh, pieces are also the people that have been discussing, you know, signing, uh, uh, search, and so forth. And we all have additional jobs, and we haven't been able to make as much progress on things like the catalog search API. Uh, so we, we're definitely looking for more help as well. Hi. So uh, this is Nisha. Uh, my understanding from previous conversations about metadata. Uh, and images is was that OCI v2 was supposed to solve some of that those issues. Does anyone have any insight into that side of the uh, discussion? Well, that's what we're talking about here, Nisha, is, you know, we, yes, there has been discussion. This is the group that's been discussing it. Um, and we can use some help on what the next level of details are. Um, and probably a good place to start is to move them out of these little HackMD links that I've created. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk with, you know, Phil and Chris and, and Mike and others is where should we put this stuff for general discussion so that we can start to build up a requirements and validate the requirements and so forth. Yeah, so I mean, I I started this discussion a while ago last year uh, about what a container manifest ought to look like, uh, and what I got from it was just um, different conversations about well, do we actually need it? What's wrong with the what's wrong with the container manifest as it looks like now? Um, what's wrong with identifying a container image by its digest 
uh, what's wrong with uh, the way that what's wrong with layers right uh, yeah so even it, it seems that there's some there's some discussion happening even in the way that the image manifest is structured right now or like you know um the, there was a uh, you know discussion saying like layers shouldn't even be something that should be exposed to anyone uh, because that's just like the inner working of the way the graph driver works uh, it, it really shouldn't have been exposed in the first place um, so my the, the the place that I'm coming from is uh, mostly about reasoning. Uh, about a container image before you actually deploy it. Um, and I feel like the the metadata that the SPDX group uh, fairly is fairly comprehensive and it's mm -hmm. a nice place that you can, I mean, you uh, whether adopting the SPDX standard or not, it, it is, it's still up for discussion, but at least you can look at the metadata and see, you know, which ones, which ones make sense. I, I think I think most of it makes sense. Um, there are there are some the SPDX considers a, a container manifest. I mean, a, a container image as a package uh, in and of itself. Uh, but the trouble is that it also needs to identify the the packages that were installed in it when, when the container was built at build time. Uh, and this is hard because there is no visibility into what happens in a container at the build time. Right, it, it winds up as a, it's a result that gets in the registry. So those are, those are some great topics. And let me, because I think it frames a bunch of the pieces that help people get their head around what we're talking about leveraging and, 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 uh, and taking that, of the fact that they're exposed. So the way we're trying to make this more understood is a registry knows how to store a, co a collect, a, a th it knows how to store things. The things are made up of a named thing and a collection of blobs that represent that thing. The collection of blobs could be ordinal, like a Docker image, and there's you know, the overlay where just every layer can you know, white, white out a, a file in the previous layer. Or it could just be multiple files that are stored as separate layers for whatever reason they want to do. Uh, it's, it, the Helm charts didn't do it this way, but let's just say a Helm chart is you know, tarred as one layer and the configuration, um, the, the values are another layer uh, because I might have various charts that the only difference is the, the values. So those could be different layers. Um, the point is, is that there's this infrastructure that we could leverage. The, the premise that we're trying to say is, first of all, the uh, media type, OCI image, VND OCI image, as you see there, uh, is equivalent to a Docker image, a container image. If you see that media type, the Docker client should continue to work. The, the ContainerD client should continue to work. The Helm client should say, that's not what I asked for. That's not the droid I asked for, and I'm going to ignore it. Um, and likewise, scanners will look at that value and say, oh, I know what to do for, let me see what else I have in here. Uh, yeah, all right, let me, I don't want to get too far off. The scanners can look at it and go, I know how to scan that. Now, once you're in a particular artifact type, the layers that are associated with that artifact type are up to that tooling for that artifact type to determine. So SPDX for others, it's basically a, it's a proposal for how to do a bill of materials of what's in a type, an, an object, whether it be an NPM package or a Docker image. Um, and the premise there is, can Docker images, and when I say Docker images, we'll say container images, you know, the, the, the uh, an anonymous -y, what is it? Anyway, the same thing. I uh, can say that in the Docker, in the container image community, there is a way now to represent S, uh, software bill of materials. And that is, let's say it's another layer. So I, Nisha, I think the, the question you're kind of asking is should SPDX be something that is exposed as a top level object in the manifest as you know, the OCI distribution spec has outlined an image spec, or can it just leverage the infrastructure that's already there? Um, 
And that's the latter is where, and this is where spending a lot of time with Stephen Day and Jimmy and, and, and various people and drilling into how the infrastructure works is we're trying to make sure we can do all the things we want to do without making major changes. So it turns out all the things we're trying to do with uh, manifest so artifacts at the manifest level, 99, actually 100% of the stuff is there. It's actually in the spec. Um, it's just we need to articulate how do you use it in a way to get what you want out of it. Uh, so the proposal, the working proposal is if SPDX and the stuff you're working on would turn, you know, take effect, then you would go to the OCI um, uh, tooling scenarios and say, hey, we want to propose a change to the actual image spec. And there would be a new layer that might say .spdx, for instance. And you would know that this is a VND something something spdx dot layer. And whether it's a tar or spdx extension is a different conversation we've been having lately. Do, do, exi it, do yeah. existing clients ignore media types on layers they don't understand? Uh, the I have to go back and check though. I know the manifests in the index they do ignore. I don't know around the layers, and that's yeah. I'm just curious, curious about, but I mean, I think in terms of looking at this, it's, it's very much not entirely clear where to where things belong. Um, um, and the the index metadata is specified as things like architecture and OS. Yeah, and doesn't have a space for. This isn't something executable at all. This is actually a signature, for example. Or yeah, we should keep index out to the side for a moment because there are some pieces that are missing on index that we think we can leverage of what we've figured out at Manifest. But it's, it, it helps to have some of these conversations by having a concrete of what does exist today. So for instance, I think the major point that I'm trying to say is what Nisha and you were bringing up is if the container image format wants to support SPDX or some kind of software bill materials, they would decide how to define their layers for that type. So they would have to be, for instance, probably a media type OCI image config.v2 that would say that all clients would know to look for the V2 because the V2 would actually have a layer that says it's an SPDX. From a registry, a distribution project perspective, we shouldn't care. We just know how to store layers with these manifests. And that's the, the leverage point that I'm trying to have registry operators be able to say, look, if you want to put new types in there, go for it. We don't care as long as they, it, it's like, if I want to put a new file type on my disk subsystem, my, my laptop, I don't need to go to Windows and Ubuntu and Mac to ask their permission, right? There's a common API for storing things. What's in that file? If I try to sit in PowerPoint here and open up, you know, a JSON file, well, uh, a, some other file it doesn't know, it's gonna go like, no, I don't know how to support that. So that's the balance that we're trying to tease out is registries know how to store layers. There's a type of layer types that are associated with an artifact type. And it's up to that community for that particular artifact to define, to decide how they want to leverage it. Cool, so I have a couple of thoughts related to this conversation so far. Um, to your question, Justin, earlier, basically, um, Steve was mentioning manifest lists. In the specification right now for OCI image, the tools are required to ignore media types that they do not understand. Um, so that would mean if you did, so, un, so before you even get to the platform, right, and you say, do I support like OS Linux or architecture MD64, you would also see other media types in there um, at the top level for the manifest, well, not at the top level, but at the manifest array level. And if you do not know what that media type is, your tool is supposed to ignore that. Yep, so if you don't know what OCI image manifest v1 plus JSON is, you ignore it, you look at the next thing, maybe you know what Helm is, and maybe Helm is in that list. Um, so that would mean to imply that like, your tool is going to get a different error if you try to pull directly a manifest versus a manifest list, which, it's kind of like not great UX, um, so that would kind of suck. Um, but then beyond that, to Nisha's point earlier about uh, the standard on bill of deliverables or bill of materials, that is super interesting to me, but I think when Steve 
and everybody in this discussion on artifacts, artifacts is talking about metadata. We're talking about what data people are want, wanting to search for, like across registries. Like the, we're talking about metadata in terms of the distribution aspect of metadata, not necessarily runtime or con like it could be contents, but it needs to be in some kind of format that's indexable uh, for the registries such that users can search across the registries, across their databases in an effective way to find the images they're interested in. And so this is the metadata we're talking about is closer related to the distribution protocol and searching across it rather than anything that's directly about the image, uh, runtime about the image, like in the OCI image specification. There could be some overlap there. So I think that's definitely worth uh, talking about. But I think that um, you could have more fine grain formats and detail inside the OCI image spec uh, or however people are deciding to um, in like include the SPDX stuff but then also have a more simple format that's easily searchable or indexable for the distribution aspect. Yeah, I, I didn't get the piece that the, I didn't uh, explain it well enough to say metadata is an additional piece of information that sits at distribution as Jimmy was saying. The meta quote metadata of a SPDX or bill of materials, I actually don't think of that as metadata or it's a different granularity. It is part of the artifact itself. So there's, because and it's one of the conversations I've been trying to have specific around S S SBOM so software bill materials and and other things. How many of these uh, discussions, these th things that people want to add to artifacts, should be known by the artifact tooling? Like, does the container tooling know about software bill, bill of materials or not? If it doesn't then we need to enhance the specs to say that there can be other layers and other types of information on an artifact that you need to ignore, kind of like what happens with index. So far, I actually haven't heard that full requirement. There's other things, like Jimmy said, is, you know, there's search APIs, like the documentation or what Git hash was kind of associated with that. That's this other level of metadata that I'd like to have adopted to distribution as well. Um, that isn't necessarily known by the specific tooling. The client tooling for containers does not need to know about that. They might use labels, they might use something else, but there's no uh, piece there. Somebody else has got an open mic. Did you want to say something? Yeah, I, I think the other thing is that it's really easy to get tripped up on the layers versus blobs thing. The, the OCI manifest, that array should just be called blobs, to be totally honest. It's confusing that it's called layers. Um, I agree. I, yeah. I get, I, I mean, I have to remind myself of what uh, Steve and, um, um, and the others have told me that, no, they, this is not that kind of layer. This is another kind of layer. Uh, yeah, I get, I get confusing. pretty confused. Sorry, it's even more confusing because when you, um, when you use the registry protocol, so the actual like HTTP, like REST protocol, the routes at which you put layers are slash blob. It's V2 slash blob. So it, it's even the registry protocol doesn't have a, really a concept of layers as concepts of blobs. So it's, it's definitely a huge misnomer. Yeah, I come from the embedded world and layers over there for build systems are completely, the diff, completely different concepts. So I'm already confused. Yeah, and to your earlier point, Isha, of like how much should be exposed and so forth. From a user's perspective that's trying to use the tools that we're all talking about creating and, and fostering, they should not know anything about this. Like this is the sausage factory. And yeah, if we had another chance that was worthwhile going back and quote refactoring and renaming some of the things, we'd probably come up with some better names. But we all know naming is part of the hardest problems of all these things. So if somebody wants to be called Bob versus Fred, then you know, as long as it still does what it's supposed to do, uh, we're just saying we're gonna leverage it as is. But I, I was also tripped up quite a bit. I, I had endless back and forth with Stephen Day, arguing back and forth with each other on Slack and others. And it turned out we were just referring to something with a different perception of what that name meant. Um, 
So hopefully the things that are on the surface uh, that our end users that are running a, a million other things that in their head, those will be consistent. And that's why I'd like it to be a Helm push-pull, not uh, an ORAS push-pull, a Foo push-pull, an OCI push-pull. It should be as native to that project as it could possibly be. And all of this sausage goo is just internal stuff. So um, quick time check. We're about 40 minutes in. Um, do we want to touch on the, the other two items? I know some people are here definitely interested in the signing uh, topic. Yeah, let's, let's do that. Um, we started touching on a little bit. Where did the list go? Oh, here we go. So um, to be fair, this is, I don't expect this to be the, you know, the, the full review and details of this. The main purpose of, oh, I'm not sharing, am I? Sorry. Um, share um, that the the main purpose of this call is just to get people engaged and aware and um, of the things that we'd like to do especially because it's in a in somewhat purposely abstracted little hacked MD link uh, because I was not trying to give it more credence to until this group and other a couple others are been part of the conversations I didn't want this to be promoted more than it should be yet um, what we're trying to do is, uh, is go back and step on what should the requirements be. Uh, as engineers, we love to say, hey, I've got this great you know, hammer and screwdriver and I'd love to <laughs> use it. Um, what we really wanna go back is what exactly do we need? Uh, and that's, this is we're trying to capture what those things are. And I'm purposely asking some questions and putting things out there that uh, shouldn't be part of it. So if you'll notice at the bottom, I think I, park, I created a parking lot and backlog and a couple of people have kind of affirmed, yeah, this should not be there. Um, so what I want to try to do is spend some time, whatever that time frame is, capturing what we think a good signing solution should be generically for artifacts. Uh, and then once we feel good that it's covered the right things from the scenarios to the abstractions, so one of the conversations that the ECR folks brought up is we want to make sure that each cloud could leverage their key provider, right? There shouldn't be an assumption that keys are stored directly in the registry. It should have it a way that it can be stored in whatever that cloud provider solution is or some open source project that they're running on-prem separately. Uh, so what are the requirements? And then when we feel good about that, we'll come back and say, okay, let's look at the various solutions such as Tuff you know, or, you know, or various different ones. I didn't want to try to promote any particular one. Um, so one, starting, if we can start with this, if somebody, and this is when I talk to Phil and, and Chris, is should we move this to something under OCI so that we can iterate on this in a, in a more public way, not hidden under this you know, anonymized thing? And this is Josh from uh, AWS. Um, I manage uh, ECR AWS. So just to add a little color to this, so Steve and I spoke. Um, couple weeks ago about this. Um, we are interested in working on signing. We're kind of actively working on it right now. Um, trying to find a balance between um, supporting the clients that all of our customers use. So Docker, Content Trust, the notary clients, you know, so, so folks don't have to completely change their CLI, their workflow. Um, finding a balance between that and um, trying to, I guess, build tools that we would consider to be of you know, easy to use and, and secure. Um, and one of the things we try to help customers with is key management, trust pinning, that kind of stuff. And we're, we're struggling a little bit with that right now to try to figure out how our solutions would fit into um, notary APIs and, and fit with some of the popular clients. Um, and so Steve and I uh, and a couple other folks spoke about this a couple weeks ago. Um, and we're definitely interested in trying to figure out a solution that would let um uh you know that, that would i think naturally fit into oci yeah and just, I, I mean i've talked to Stephen before i'm i'm just i'm going to work on drafting a proposal for storing tough metadata in the registry so that we can get rid of the kind of separate notary database piece of of notary because i think it solves a whole bunch of problems around running a separate service and uh, mobility of signatures and things like that. 
Um, so you're gonna be storing keys then inside the registry? No, no, no. Just the sign, just the signatures. Just the JSON, okay. Yeah, just the, the the tough JSON pieces, basically, but not not and um, signatures, but not keys. No, Notary doesn't store keys anyway. So that's the yeah that, that's the piece that we wanted to you know certainly pull you and Justin and try to move the time zone to something that's reasonable for you is you know is there a notary v2 like we don't want to completely reboot the system but we it seems there seems to be enough changes required that it couldn't necessarily be these optional additional things but we wanted to leverage you know at least the mind share of what people have there um, so that's awesome if you're able to spend time get a new spec put together but we, i think we do want to capture what are the requirements because unfortunately we get a little far into some of these solutions and then we keep on trying to insist that this solution does solve that particular problem where it doesn't really, where it could if it was just, you know, captured up front. Um, yeah, I think that's very useful. I think that the, the requirements um, um, the requirements are really important and have never really been captured very well, I don't think, for what people really want. And I think some of the some of the things, for example, you mentioned at the bottom about signing layers, not whole objects, for example, is something that's, um, yeah, those types of things are things that are basically have never been in scope and it's not clear whether they're real requirements or not. Um, because obviously they have a lot of implications and questions around what um whether people well uh, you know whether people care or not for example or and what you do about i mean with um does it make any does it make any i would argue that the the piece about layers as layer signatures is because of whiteouts is probably not really terribly meaningful because you can white out and or replace all the content in the bottom layer anyway. So saying that you have the bottom layer from somewhere else is kind of meaningless, I think. Mm -hmm. um, for Docker image, true. For Docker images, yes. So uh, for different artifact types, that might not be the case. Um, so the the thing that I wanted to try to do, and this is one of the things that's been interesting, talking about the, the software build of materials scenarios and just to the various in the PatCon events is thinking about the different artifacts. And one of the things I'm kind of coming to the realization, which is kind of obvious, is we not one solution is gonna fit all. And what I'm talking about is like, NPM might sign things slightly differently than images that might sign them slightly different than a CNAB, for instance. And then a CNAB being something that aggregates other things actually has to deal with its top level thing is one signature type, but it might be in, in incorporating an object that is signed slightly differently. One of the things I would love to figure out is can a can distribution support an, a, a generic way of storing signatures so that these package managers can do some amount of uniqueness. Like one of the things I love around distribution is the layers is a generic concept. The blobs are a generic concept. In Docker, they're ordinal. In Helm, they're not. In Singularity, they're actually just use one. Um, can is there a, a way that distribution can store signatures that can be enough variance of the different package managers need to represent their types? Yeah, I mean there are some generic issues about signatures that, like, how do you sign JSON, for example, which is actually not uh, not nearly as trivial as you might think. <laughs> um, uh, that I think certainly make a lot of sense to standardize because actually um, it's um, it's a bit of a mess at the moment in TAF because actually it turns out that not everyone's implemented it correctly and um, according to the spec and it's kind of annoying to implement. Um, so I think there's definitely some pieces like that where a general mechanism for how do you sign the pieces will be helpful. Um, and to your and, point, like Docker images might not sign the layers, but how might, or CNAB, uh, we might want to sign manifests, 
and an index is also signed. So it, it, it's more of the layers is almost like a... Uh, yeah, but I think some of that comes down to basically how, how we extend OCI and make sure that, you know, that, that, that has a consistent model for how, if I want to do X, how, I, how do I do X in a, in a manifest list or an image? I mean, because I think that, um, you know, you might, you, it's definitely the case you might potentially want signatures in different places and, um, but it would be nice if that was due, obvious due to general extensibility rules and maybe we don't need specific rules for signatures, but then there, I know, I think there are some weirdnesses about signatures such that maybe you need some specific rules as well, just because they're, yeah. I mean, I think there's a, there's a, there's a few of these things where we definitely need to think about how we, um, I'm um, so some of the same things have come up with the encryption work that um, IBM are doing where there's some weirdnesses that I think would help to have generic rather than specific mechanisms. Yeah, I think that for all the discussion around this, we need to like follow the philosophy of make the easy things easy and the hard things mm. possible, just because nobody is using signing basically right now. Like the Docker notary stuff, Docker Content Trust and Notary, if you look at the vast majority of people using containers, the vast majority of them are not using it. So it has to be the decision of, hey, should we make something simple that literally everybody will use? Or do we want to have something that is like resistant to freeze attacks and all kinds of things, right? So I'm even maybe advocating looking at requirements of security that may not actually be uh, that important to most people um, just in terms of getting the ergonomics right and the flexibility right so that people actually just use it. Mm -hmm. um, well, I, I don't know if that. Um, I, I have to point out the original, the original Docker image format, pre OCI, the V1 format had all images assigned. It's just the, um, and it was schema, right? yeah. and the manifest was signed. But it was, it was totally useless because there was no sane method of knowing what it, what anyone's key was. So the whole thing was total waste of time. And it's like, it was universally adopted, but absolutely useless. So I think you can go <laughs> too far in the other way. That well. is absolutely true. Yeah. And I'm not advocating for embedding a key inside the Docker client that everybody has, uh, like <laughs> schema one. Um, but I do think that like this, this is the thing coming from CoreOS to Red Hat. Red Hat, they're like, what the hell is notary? We should just GPG sign this. We've been doing it for however many years for, for RHEL and RPM. Um, and none of, like, nobody understands Tough and any of this other stuff. And we, we had, like, implemented notary and all those other things. So we knew Tough. We know, like, the actual benefits to using Tough. But there definitely are ergonomics around it. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. No, I totally agree. No, uh, completely. And, um, uh, and I think that's why... That's why having that's why having some requirements is kind of useful because I think that um, but it also depend i mean it kind of depends because I think it's hard to have a discussion without the requirements because if the requirement is just it's usable that's <laughs> Also, not very helpful. Sure, I mean, yeah. yeah. I, I guess I'm saying look at things through that light, not necessarily just the blanket statement, make it usable. Because like, for example, tough, I, I feel like Tough was a solution looking for a problem because uh, when, when we adopted Tough in the container ecosystem, it, it, it is great. It actually is great. It, it is super useful. If I was trying to run my own supply chain for something that was entirely in my control, I would absolutely use Tough. But having to integrate with a whole bunch of other systems, maybe not. Um, and, and I think that like you, we can yeah, no, I mean, yeah. get tough specifically and say like, hey, what even parts of tough are we using? For example, like threshold uh, threshold signing is a really cool thing that tough supports. But is that actually something that we need? Uh, maybe, maybe yes, maybe no. And I think just like reviewing what we have will get us some of the requirements. Like looking at what is there, what is providing the complexity in the first place, right? And well, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I think that, yeah, I definitely agree. I think that some of the, um, some of the requirements people have are, um, 
are more around questions of authenticity than upgrade, for example. And um, and for a long time when TAF was introduced, anyway, no one was really doing upgrades because we didn't really have upgradable things. So I think there's a there's definitely a bunch of questions around that. Um, uh, and I think a lot of I think maybe a lot of the requirements are around authenticity. I mean, some of the ones that Steve has mentioned around like, did this thing come from Microsoft is a very different question from what TAF is trying to answer. Mm -hmm. um, and if that's what people are expecting, I mean, that's certainly what some people believe they're getting from Notary, which is not really what it's designed to tell you a lot of the time. Yeah, so I mean, from a like from a, a people want it yes. i don't want to say the majority we have a very large volume of people that turn on content trust and we kind of did it just for metrics so in, in acr you actually have to flip a bit that says i want content trust which doesn't do anything other than just tell us they want it so we have a lot of people that want it but actually wind up not using it and it's the typical curve of asr using it and like oh it doesn't actually work everywhere and it doesn't actually meet my needs so the desire is there to Jimmy's point and you know, Justin's point is like, it has to be both usable, which I do have concerns around Tuffin and Toto, but that might just be, we need to put things on top of it to make it more usable. Um, and it needs to serve the requirements that I actually want. Um, you know, and, and we're trying to capture some of those. I don't wanna go into the detail here, but it's, I think the usability has to be good. Microsoft is historically known for being extremely usable and extremely insecure to we then swung the pendulum and then we came extremely secure to the point where I can't use this thing. And we just shut major features off. So kind of the firewall rules, like I can't get a firewall rule working, so I'll just disable the firewall. Um, so I think those are, I don't know how to quite capture the usability metric, um, but that's certainly a piece of the requirements. Um, but that's just one. So we only have a couple of minutes left. Um, I'll, I'll jump in for Phil, who's about to do the same thing. And we, so we have this topic, and then we also have, what was the other one I had? Um, oh, the search requirements. And this was kind of a no brainer as well. So I think for the couple of minutes we have left, one, I just wanted to make sure that there was interest and there was awareness. Unfortunately, um, the Harbor folks couldn't make it, um, and Trisha couldn't make it, but we'll have a recording we can send out. I'd like to figure out where we should move these hacked MD docs so we can actually start capturing these properly. And I can work with Phil and, and Chris, or if anybody has other suggestions. Um, and then just, you know, again, soliciting for help <laughs> so that we can, A, is this the direction we want to go? But just in terms of where to put things, I mean, there, there have been a few comments on things that OCI is, is supposed to be somewhere for standardizing what's in practice, not inventing new things. And there seems to be some resistance to use it, to maybe having these, I mean, do we need a kind of, OCI dev re org or something just to put things if if that is the attitude in OCI or a unofficial OCI not specs org or something. I mean, I, I think that's a kind of problematic attitude for OCI to have, but I, if they have that attitude, I'm not going to try and change it. Yeah, uh, I actually feel the same way. There there doesn't seem to be a, like a like a working group ish. Um, thing that's on, I suppose, the GitHub repo. Uh, maybe there needs to be like a development branch in the spec where issues can be filed against and people can talk on those issues. So I, I'm, I'm, it seems to me that at least from an outsider's perspective that um, these kind of uh, discussions get go on hack md on in the meetings in the mailing list and then something gets formalized and that's when it shows up on the the repo um, well, we do have pull requests and we do have issues that we are doing in oci i mean being somebody that just freshly went new through this whole process um we did have a proposal for the artifacts and there was a bunch of discussion on it you know in github uh, the only reason i haven't done this one in oci yet is I wanted to make sure that people that were be involved in it would have input before I put it very public. I didn't want any of the cloud vendors or Docker or others to be surprised by it. Um, so I, 
I don't know. I, I will definitely sense I did feel some resistance as well. Um, I mean, that, that was definitely the case with the, the encrypted image spec, which I've been kind of helping out with a bit, a bit where they seem to be just like, it seemed to be, unless you've got it in production and it's consensus, we're not having it as a, as a spec, uh, or incorporating it in the spec. Phil, do you want to jump in on this one? Yeah, uh, I'm slightly res reticent to speak for the whole, you know, OCI TOB, but yeah, I mean, uh, the, there's, I mean, we're running out of time fast, but I, I, you know, this may be something we want to discuss more broadly in general, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's both the, the slight overlap of, you know, CNCF projects versus OCI specs, you know, what, what really fits in the OCI. Um, because first, there's there's the whole problem of hands on deck. I mean, the more we add to OCI, the more people we need to, you know, keep these things rolling. And then secondly, what Justin referred to is a general sense that this is a, a place where we sort of innovate new things and then sort of try and and, and make sure people, you know, actually use them. Um, and, and to me, that second point, maybe there can be some more discussion there because you know, for example, something like signing obviously aligns really strongly with distribution spec and image spec, uh, which are already in the OCI. So for me, there's more alignment there than say, some new idea that just happens to want to be a spec somewhere. So to me, that's, that's a, a differential that would make sense to at least have the discussion. I think fucking signing is just a giant can of worms too. <laughs> like I, I totally agree that uh, this needs to go someplace. We should not invent this. Like we need to try as much as possible, see what actually sticks before anything gets gets really like made concrete. And the only thing I just want to try to do here is I certainly am not trying to invent anything. But the approach I've been trying to do with the requirements is let's get the requirements first, and then let's bake off, shoot off, whatever you want to call it. We should absolutely look at the current ones. But I think if we had enough requirements that were validated by enough of the clouds and the customers that we all represent, then the um, various signing solutions can be, take it more seriously and that whether they should incorporate those capabilities. Uh, so that, that's kind of what I'm trying to do is capture them enough to make them important, the whole with them. You know, uh, is it important for tough or, uh, the, the stuff that Justin's going to work on for V2, you know, is it enough to justify why he should incorporate it into the proposal he's going to make? Yep. All right. I know we're, uh, we're starting to lose some folks. I know I'm supposed to be on another call, um, but good discussion. Thanks for all the kind of background work to pull some of this together, Steve. And, um, I guess offline we'll decide how to how to continue the discussion because it sounds like there's a lot that we've kind of opened up, which is good. But uh, how to where to discuss it and how to keep the discussion flow discussion flowing, we'll we'll figure that out and follow up. And I will post this video to the OCI YouTube channel and update uh, the mailing list, et cetera, with what we've uh, discussed here. So thanks, everybody. Can we one more thing? Can we figure out if we want what what time do we want to do so that others can join? Like, did, was this time reasonable for people? Maybe that's something, Phil. We can do some kind yeah, of yeah, we can survey we can, of some sort. It yeah, sounds good. We can survey that. We actually had more people on for the bulk of this call than we normally have for the OCI Wednesday weekly discussion. Maybe that's a data point. It's a good data point. Yep. All right. Um, thanks, everybody. And like I said, I'll email out the uh, video and everything else. Thanks for joining. Thanks, thanks. Thank you, Phil.